position. Um, it's a great honor, and I'm humbled to have this opportunity. Um, on behalf of the athletic department, I would like to personally um, thank Greg and show gratitude for all he's done in his time in athletics, especially the last 10 plus years as AD. You know, Greg is a true servant leader and someone who has never sought credit for all the great things that have happened here. But when something may have not gone well, he was the first one to step up and take responsibility or, and, or shoulder the blame. But of all the great things that have happened here in the last 10 plus years, he always gave that credit to someone else, whether it be you know, you think about the championships we've won, the experiences that have been created for students, fans, staff, whether it be the Notre Dame series, the Rose Bowl, the All Dean concert, the academic success of our student athletes, the staff he's built, um, the staff he's been able to retain. When you think about all the facility enhancements we've done in the last 10 plus years, over $300 million worth of enhancements. And during that same time, we have not added to our long-term debt. We've actually reduced it, which if you think about it, the financial responsibility and what he's led, we are in as great a shape as any university in the country right now. I would say that there's not a university in better shape to navigate these difficult times um, that we're navigating. And that's all due to his leadership. And, and beyond that, the intrinsic things, the, the culture he's created, the, the way he treats everyone, it doesn't matter what position you have here, he treats everyone the same and has been a great role model. Um, and I can say for myself personally, you know, he gave me an opportunity uh, 10 years ago, hired me away from football, uh, promoted me to administration, uh, gave me opportunities to, uh, he challenged me, allowed me to grow, take chances, failed, succeeded, but learned throughout all of that. And it was his mentorship and leadership that have made me the leader I am today. And, and without him, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And, and I'm so thankful for his guidance and his leadership. And on behalf of everyone and myself, just really want to just say thank you to Greg and and now I'll be happy to answer any questions anyone has. All right, let's go to questions. Let's start out with uh, Chip Towers and then Anthony Dasher. Yeah, Josh, uh, congratulations on the appointment. Uh, it, it, you know, I just wonder in the immediate, how do you envision um, the next few months? Will you be, you know, making a lot of uh, big decisions or do you feel more like, a, I don't know, sort of a steward at this this moment? How have you been directed kind of to go forward, if that makes sense? Uh, thanks, Chip. Well, I don't think this is a time for change. I think uh, what the strength of our department is, is continuity. And now is definitely not a time to be looking at what we can change. We've got enough challenges in front of us navigating these times that we're facing right now in light of the pandemic and everything else going on. So it's really about keeping the ship on course. And um, we've got a great senior team. So um, it's really about keeping that continuity and keeping everything moving in the same direction. So I would hope to just keep providing the steady leadership that Greg has and, and keep us on course. Hey, Josh, congratulations, man. That's right. Thanks, Dash. Uh, fastball right out of the gate. Um, how much, uh, if any, are you hoping to kind of use this opportunity to, you know, kind of show that, I, you know, you can do this job, you know, full time moving forward? You know, hopefully, uh, Dash, what I've done in my career is built up more than just what you would look at in a couple months. Um, mm -hmm. I've always tried to show that day in and day out. But, you know, if this is an audition, then, then, then so be it. But I, I, I come to work the same way every day. I will treat today or January 1st no different than any other day. Show up, treat people the right way represent the university always. Um, one thing that President Moorhead and, and Greg have taught me during my time here is always keep the university at the forefront of every decision. Anything we do, every decision we make, let's make sure it's in the best interest of the university. So as long as I'm doing that and, and treating people the right way and represent this university, everything else will take care of itself. So Lord willing, let the chips fall where they may. Thanks, man. Let's go to Seth Emerson and then uh, Mike Griffith. Joshua. Two-part question. Um, one, what at this point in your career makes you feel that you're confident about taking over, not just on an interim basis, but potentially full-time a, a program as large as as Georgia? Um, and like, uh, I forgot the second part, so never mind. Just tackle the first part. <laughs> I can make up a second part if you like. Um, you know, Seth, I've always been young in my career as I've advanced. Um, I've always, I've had, I am young, but I've had 20 plus years of experience in college athletics. I've seen athletics at every level, small schools, big schools. I've worked as a student assistant. I've worked as a grad assistant coach. I've worked in football operations. 
that gives me the coaching side of it. I've worked in administration for 10 plus years. I've been able to serve as an AD. And I know that a small school like Millsaps, some people may say, well, that's not really relevant. But, you know, in all reality, it's a lot more relevant than you think because you're dealing with student athletes, parents, coaches, staff. Uh, the, a lot of the issues are the same. So I've had a wide range of experience. And I think, um, and especially my time here at Georgia the last few years, Greg's really nurtured me and, and given me some peaks behind the rope to really see what it's like in his shoes. And, uh, and I, I feel ready and I feel confident um, for this responsibility. Josh, uh, I, I, I don't want to make it sound like doing a job interview with you here. We're not the ones that are going to hire you, but it is interesting to ask about your philosophies. I guess I want to, I guess I want to get your thoughts on non-revenue sports. I mean, obviously football is the, the engine that drives the revenue train, but we look at Georgia and the, the, the great high school sports here and the revenues, and we see some sports that are struggling. Just what are your thoughts on the importance of, of competing for championships and non-revenue programs and spending on non-revenue programs? Thanks, Mike. You know, I think I'm wired the same way with Greg with that. I'm a competitor. I want to win at everything. If we start a badminton team tomorrow, I want to win a national championship in that. So it doesn't matter the sport. They're all important to me. And I can speak from my time as an AD before. When you're an AD, every one of those teams feels like one of your children, and you want every one of them to win. Every win feels great. Every loss is terrible. So the natural competitor in me wants to win championships in everything we do. So um, obviously we understand the importance that, that football and the revenue sports – provide our other sports opportunities, but at the same time, I want to win championships and everything. Yeah, let's go to Mark Weiser and uh, Jake Rowe. Josh, have you had some initial conversations with, with, with President Moorhead? Just to, obviously he, he knows that, that you're interested, but, but to kind of get the ball rolling in that regard. And I want to ask you as well, kind of about your experience at Millsaps, um, you know, how you think that time there um, helped you, you know, running a department? There have been no meetings to this date in terms of moving forward or what's next in the process for the search. Um, you know, Mark, I took that job at Millsaps uh, in 2014 with long-term thinking in mind. People thought I was a little crazy to leave Georgia and go to a Division III school, but sometimes you have to step outside of your comfort zone and challenge yourself, and that's what I did. And it was great for me to get in the weeds of every single detail of a program where you've got a smaller staff of 30 to 40 people. So. You can't delegate. You've got to get in the weeds, whether it's setting prices and running a concession stand to how you're going to live stream a video game to set ticket prices, marketing, sponsorships, raising money. And again, again, that's on a small scale. But when you don't have people to delegate it to and you've got to get in the weeds, you have a better understanding. So those experiences got me out of my comfort zone, challenged me. I grew during that time. And when I returned to Georgia, I felt so much more comfortable discussing what other topics may be because I've lived it now. And again, it's different. I get it. You know, the commas in a different place at Millsaps than it is here at Georgia. But at the same time, it's all about relationships. It's about people. It's how you treat people. Um, it's about showing up and doing your job. And I, I can't tell you how those experiences, how much confidence they've given me moving forward, just the, the knowledge of seeing a program A to Z. Josh, I think we all kind of assume that, that you really would like this opportunity, that you would like to be the next athletic director at Georgia long term. Uh, but, but, Kind of in your words, you know, do you want that opportunity and, and how much would you appreciate that opportunity to, uh, to do that? Thanks, Jake. Yeah, of course, I would love that opportunity. It's anyone's dream that's in administration to be a Power 5 AD. But beyond that, I love Athens, Georgia. I love this university. I love working for President Moorhead. I love the people in this athletic department on campus. Um, my family loves it here. My kids are my kids were born in Georgia. They identify as kids that are they're Georgia natives, and, and we love it here. So I would love that opportunity. But at the end of the day, uh, I will serve this university however, see, however needed, however seen fit. Um, you know, this university has been here before me. It'll be here after me. I'm just here to carry the torch any way they need how. Um, but I love it here, and I'd love to stay here the rest of my life. All right, let's go to Zach Klein and uh, then uh, Roddy Nabalsi. Hey, Josh, um, I'm not sure how the athletic calendar works, but with Greg leaving at the end of the year, are there any uh, impending, quote unquote, you know, mid-major big decisions that are usually on uh, the athletic director's calendar come January, February, while you guys are searching for um, the permanent position to take his chair? Well, I have intentionally moved all those decisions up to mid-December. We're going to try to get as many of those things hammered through, especially anything controversial, Greg is going to be. And even if it's after January 1, we'll still just say, that was a Greg McGarity decision, so we can put that on him. 
you know, Zach, there's always stuff coming up down the pike, you know, because we're in a world now where we're getting curveballs every day and we're navigating through this basketball season with the men's, women's teams. And every day is something different, a cancellation of a game or rescheduling. So there's going to be a lot of things coming at us here, um, but there's never a bored month in, in athletics. It's always something coming. So, um, but at the end of the day, look, Greg's a phone call away. He, he's a mentor to me. I, I wouldn't hesitate to pick up the phone and give him a shout. Um, but, you know, ready for whatever, whatever comes. Thank you. Josh, uh, three quick questions for you. Uh, one, when's the next concert at Sanford Stadium? Two, when is there going to be beer in Sanford Stadium? And three, what is your if, – what philosophy, philosophical difference do you have between the way you would run the program and, say, the way the program has been run in the past? You know, first question, concert. We're always looking at, uh, at options for that. And, obviously, um, this year would have been a great year for it. But in light of everything that's going on, it makes it more difficult. I would be interested to see what the concert world looks like in the future. Um, and I think that there could be a potential where you could see across the country more concerts in larger venues because they can maybe go to a venue that seats 90,000, put 20 or 30 in and it'll reduce capacity and manage that. But um, I know that industry is struggling right now. So we'll see how that plays out. But I'd love to do that again at Sanford Stadium because um, it's just great for the town. It's great for the school. I think it went really well. So I'm Definitely would always keep that on the, uh, the list of things. You know, in terms of beer, Roddy, we want to be responsible about that and make sure that whatever we do, we, we roll it out the right way um, in a responsible way. We'll see. Um, you know, I think it's becoming more popular in the conference and, and how, it's, how it's going. Um, and then what was your last question was about what differences? Your yeah, beer? philosophically, what differences would do you foresee between yourself Run if, if you were to get this job and you were the made of the full time AD, not the interim, uh, do you have a philosophical difference in how you would run it versus how the athletic association has been run in the past? You know, Roddy, I, I think, um, first of all, I, I would hope that I'd share the same core beliefs and values as Greg and try to emulate those as best as possible. But you know, sometimes it's not just about your beliefs, it's about the executive team. And I think what Greg has done here is he's built an executive team with people with different backgrounds, different skill sets that he allows to have healthy confrontations and great debate. So it's not just about what I believe, it's about what our team believes and how we can navigate that. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's any major differences. Um, I'm probably a little more vocal, Greg would tell you, I'm a little more outgoing on, on social media and things like that, and probably um, a little more forward facing in terms of that. And, but no, I would just hope to share the same values and again, at the end of the day, it's keeping the, the mission of the university first and foremost in everything we do. Because um, if you do that, you, you know, you can't go wrong. Thanks. All right, let's go to Connor Riley and uh, Vance Levy. Hey, Josh, how has your time as a director of football ops, do you think, helped you as a, an administrator and potentially help you as an athletic director? Thanks, Connor. That, that's actually a great question because – I think when you spend time on the other side of the aisle as a coach, as a grad assistant coach or as a director of football operations, you have a better understanding of needs versus wants. Sometimes as an administrator, you may get a request from a coach and you may say, well, why do they need that? Is that really needed? Is that necessary? Is that going to make the difference between signing that recruit or not signing that recruit? But when you've worked on that side of the aisle, you know what it's like to fight for every inch of your program. And when you're a coach, everything matters because you're trying to uncover every stone. You're trying to take care of every advantage you can to give your student athletes the best chance to be successful. So having that mindset and understanding that when a coach comes to me and, and explains to me what they need or why they need it, I have a, a greater appreciation for it as an administrator because I've been there. I've been on that side of the aisle and I have a greater appreciation for it. Hey, Josh, uh, congrats and best of luck on an awesome responsibility. Uh, one of the, que the question I asked uh, Greg yesterday was kind of, what he worries the most about moving forward. And he indicated that if we had to go through another year of drastically reduced seating that basketball and football, what that would look like. I'm not asking for the athletics bottom line at this point, but what would that look like if you had, I mean, are you talking furloughs, et cetera? And then finally, uh, have y'all got any indication from the SEC is when they will begin to look at the 
21 football schedule? You know, the 21 schedule is something that has not been discussed recently, to my knowledge. Um, in terms of what next year is going to look like, it's so hard to tell, Vance. I think uh, t to make any predictions would be, wouldn't be fair to anyone to, to speculate on those things. But I can give a lot of credit to what's happened this year um, from people in Matt Borman's office and Tim Keeley in the ticket office and, and going back to Matt in the development office, what they've done to help keep, you know, keep the people, re, you know, instead of the refunding, keeping money in the system and converting it triple points, that has been phenomenal. That crew has been working tirelessly since, since really September to make that happen, which has put us in a great position. Um, but as for next year, we'll see. There's so many unknowns to work through. But I, you got to give credit to our business office as well as we've, man, as we've managed expenses throughout this because that management has, has also led to put us in a good position that we're in right now. Hey, we've got uh, just a few minutes left. Uh, let's just open up. Anyone has a question, go ahead and jump in. Hey, Josh, uh, you mentioned uh, social media a while ago. Of course, you're, you're a big Twitter guy. You're on there uh, you know, quite a bit. That seemed to be something a lot more of the, of the younger, I guess, uh, ADs out there do. I know Jared, George Southern does that a lot. Why is that important for you to kind of interact with, the, I guess, for lack of a better word, your average fan and get them engaged and just kind of you know, talk about what's going on at UGA? You know, for me, um, Dash, it's a way for me to connect with fans and – the good, the bad, the ugly, to, to, to know about it and not put my head in the sand and be aware of what's going on. So, look, I don't mind when someone calls me out on Twitter or says something. I'd rather know. And sometimes when they do, I'll send them a direct message and send them my phone number and call them and talk through things. So it gives me another opportunity as another way to inter interact with our fans, to, to have a pulse. That's one thing I've prided myself on during my time here is just trying to be um, interactive and responsive to our fans and listen to them. So that's one of the key things for me. Cool. Thanks. How much, uh, Josh, how much interaction have you had with Kirby so far? And, and you know, we, we talk about the importance of football as a, gener uh, a revenue generator. Um, talk about, if you wouldn't mind, uh, your relationship with Kirby and, and how important that is and how much uh, background you've got with him. You know, uh, our time did not overlap before I came here. We, we worked in a lot of similar circles. We knew a lot of common people. So I think there's a mutual respect there. And you really try to be respectful of his time during the season. Um, I work very closely with Josh Lee and some other members of his staff to try to keep uh, keep the small fire small, keep stuff off his desk, and try to solve things before they ever get to him. So, um, you know, it, I think there's a great relationship there. I respect what he does. Um, obviously, we, we've been in similar circles. I've worked for Coach Fisher and Coach Saban, so this is from that same tree. So I have a lot of respect for the way he runs his program, first class, and um, I'm very excited to, to work with him more. Josh, can I piggyback off that? Is, is the read right that, he, especially here at Georgia these days, you're not overseeing football so much that they've got so much staff, they, they kind of do their thing that your athletic director job, whether you're interim or full-time, has a lot to do with the other sports and just the overall direction of, of the athletics department? You know, Seth, I think that's part of the culture here for all sports. Because we don't consider ourselves sports supervisors as much as sport facilitators. That's the attitude that Greg's brought to the table. We're here to serve. At the end of the day, without the student athletes and the coaches, there's no need for me to even be here. So it's all about them. So it's less about what my opinion is other than trying to be a good steward of our, all of our resources and how we operate, but facilitating and making their life easier. It's all about removing obstacles for them, making their jobs easier, helping them recruit, helping them get the kids in, in the classroom, do well and, and, and be productive citizens and win championships on the field. So, it's less about supervision, per se, more about how do we facilitate and help them. And that's been Greg's uh, leadership model from day one. Hey, Josh, uh, I remember sitting down and talking to you one time. You said that you wanted you kind of follow that Chick-fil-A uh, model of customer service. You want people to walk in and just be blown away. You changed that. You, you brought that to the stadium experience. Uh, I know with COVID, things have been kind of sideways, but what other uh, kind of customer service, fan experience, uh, improvements, uh, ideas, philosophies do you have in the pipe that you're working on? I've always got ideas, Roddy. I've got crazy <laughs> ideas when it comes to, the, you know, I always want to find different ways to make the fan experience better. I'm a big fan of Chick-fil-A, big fan of Disney, wanting to do things the way they do, you know, the way they operate. I think we've made great strides the last few years. This has been a year we've been able to really focus 
um, with reduced capacity, really take our time, um, greet people, treat them right. You know, and, and, and especially in, in light of that, uh, Roddy, I'd like to give a shout out to, you know, what we've gone through since March. Ron Corson, Ann Aranda in sports medicine, um, Mark Delfshell, Lisa Moss in facilities, and Doris Griffith and all her responsibilities. We've had a team of individuals since March that have been working tirelessly to basically navigate these waters and keep our facilities clean and safe and keep our student athletes and staff safe. The job they've done since March has been remarkable and it's people like that, but that all ties back into the culture that we're trying to create, Roddy, of, of great customer service and treating people the right way. Um, because at the end of the day, um, just like I say, I, I wouldn't be here without the student athletes, without those fans, there's no, th these events aren't the same. So we want, when you come to one of our venues, come to one of our uh, games, we want it to be an experience that you don't forget or, or a positive experience that you tell a friend about or, or something that just makes you feel better. Sometimes this is escapism for people from their daily lives. When they walk through San, the gates of Sanford Stadium, it's a release. It's a, it's a special moment for them. So we want to make that even more special uh, when they come here. Josh, Josh yesterday, up. Greg was asked about his top two or three moments looking back at his career. And he said, you know, the two Notre Dame games, the lights in the stadium. You mentioned he gave you a kind of a peek behind the curtains uh, at that job. Uh, it, when your relationship, when you look back at a defining moment, uh, where you got to see maybe the secret sauce, was it something as big as the Notre Dame game or the lights that you'll always remember with him? Or was there something maybe less public that you'll always be very fond of? Oh, you know, the thing I always remember is the phone call Greg made to me when he first offered the job to me 10 years ago. It was a life-changing moment. I was literally um, about to accept the job at Florida State with Jimbo Fisher to be his ops uh, guy. And I believed in Greg. I'd only known him for a few months because he'd only been here since, I think, August, September that year. But he had shown enough the type of person he was. And for him to take a chance on me and change my life um, 10 years ago, I will ever be forever indebted to that, that moment, that experience. But it's every day with him. It's how he treats you. But from, I mean, we talk about the other experiences, you know, the, the Notre Dame series and how that came together. And then to win both those games, to take over their stadium in South Bend. And then the light show um, that our, our team put together there uh, was a really special moment. And then for me, nothing, I don't think anything will ever top the Rose Bowl. Um, that game was just a special, special day. And um, I'm just thankful to have those experiences and, and thankful for Greg for all he's done. Josh, I assume since, since you've been in uh, sports administration that you've, you know, like I asked you a while ago, you've wanted this type of opportunity and you've probably thought about what you would do and your philosophies and those have probably evolved. How much has this pandemic maybe changed some of your preconceived notions of how you would go about doing the job, especially from a financial standpoint? You know, it always brings up opportunities for us to reevaluate the way we spend money and say, okay, because we've had to take a harder line and, and be more efficient with the way we've operated. So sometimes now you can look at it and say, okay, we've been doing it this way for a while. This year we had to make adjustments. Maybe there's some adjustments we can make going forward full-time, even post-pandemic, that we can be more efficient. So it always adds those opportunities. On the other side of that, going back to the customer service, it's proven to us that the smaller crowds, we can take our time and, tr and really focus on the experience. So um, hopefully we're getting better through that. I think we have. But really, and through all that, is, is slowing down and – you know, really appreciating the personal experiences. And I think, I think what, from my experience with our fans is the live experience is so special. Yeah, there's gonna be some people who maybe have sat at home and, and maybe are comfortable at home, but for those that have been there in person, it's really hard to top a live event. So hopefully there'll be a greater appreciation that moving forward and we can keep improving upon the service we provide when people come to an event. Let's take two more questions, two more questions. Yeah, I, I got a question. I don't, I don't want to seem too self-serving, but I, I'm sitting here, we're, we're talking with a guy who's likely athletic director. There's been pictures been sent to us. Your bio's out there. We're doing a Zoom within 24 hours. Greg had a background in this sort of transparency and public relations. Have you worked a lot with the sports information people before, and do you anticipate us having this sort of transparency and information available like this uh, in the future, provided you're the athletic director? I would hope so. I, you know, I believe that transparency is a good thing. I think accountability is a good thing. It's a good and bad thing. And I think if you do things the right way, accountability can be a great thing. So I have no intentions of, of being any different than Greg was in that regard. And hopefully there could be an open door to, uh, to help, you know, give clarification on stories when it needs to be. And 
and, and give the uh, information as needed. But um, I try to live my life as an open book. And, and that's why I'm probably a little bit more aggressive on social media is because I want to help put the story out there a little more, be a little bit more aggressive on the front end of, of telling our story um, to avoid the, the vacuum that could exist if you didn't. Last question, anyone? All right. Thanks, Josh, for your time. Thanks, everyone, for calling in and uh, spending a few minutes with uh, Josh. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to all of you very soon. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Claude. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Thank you.